Professor Marvel. Um, so this is it. This is the the final presentation. I'm I'm excited for it. Um, and I understand that it's just me and you. Like, if I know if I was in the class, if we had it in person. If this COVID thing wasn't uh, ravishing the world, that I I'd present it to the class. But it's I think I'm just presenting it to you. So a lot of my remarks will be directed at you. And I just wanted to thank you for a good summer, a good summer term, uh, for being communicative with us and with me and for helping me to learn a lot about biotechnology. I think it's been fascinating and I've, I've really liked it and learned a lot so far. Uh, one of the areas of biotechnology that I've gravitated towards is nanotechnology um, as per my final presentation. I just think it's fascinating because it's um, technology and that scientists deal with on such a small scale. And it's incredible that we're able to even do things like that like that, like DNA splicing and things like, like how in the world, like it's so small, but, uh, but yet we're able to do things on like a nano, nano scale, I guess that's how you'd say it. Uh, so my project is, I titled it nanotech armored suit a nanotechnology uh, powered, I guess you could say, or like equipped or used armored suit. Um, and I got this idea because I'd recently watched a Marvel movie with Iron Man and his suit of armor, one of his latest uh, variations of it, um, was was definitely powered by nanotechnology. Like I, all of it was, but uh, his latest one could actually repair itself. And I thought that that aspect of the technology was incredible. Like if if that could be a reality, how crazy would that be for the rest of society? And so that's what I that's what I started thinking of the problems of today's society. Like what are some things that we could solve? And I thought about how many deaths there are. Um, and how short life can be having, you know, had people um, in my extended family die from car wrecks and things like that. Um, and so some of the problems, here's some statistics on the next slide that I put in the Iraq and Afghanistan war. It was recorded that around 7000 U.S. military personnel were killed in action as of 2019. And and the next statistic, according to the National Safety Council, an estimated 39000 deaths, almost 40000 uh, resulted from car-related accidents in just the year 2019, so in just one year. And the last statistic, according to Gifford's Law Center, there are 36,000 gun-related deaths annually. And all those numbers were like, holy smokes, that's a ton of people that are dying. And and I, I thought that some of them, like a lot of them could be saved if they had some type of exoskeletal uh, armor that could protect them. And that's when I got thinking about um, like this, this suit, this suit of armor, that um, created by, by by scientists in my company, right, uh, who are experts in nanotechnology could could help that. And so, so how can we better protect our citizens and military personnel? The next slide. And as I said, you know, I, I recently watched Iron Man as, and as the stuff of movies and TVs and comic books suggest, we should turn um, ourselves to like this body morphing armor, this this armor that could uh, attach to ourselves and, and make mobility um, more easy to, to be, um, I just, to, to help us to, to be safe, to, to, to use it with ease yet to feel protected, right? Like it's, it's a, literally a suit of armor and, and in the Iron Man movies created by Marvel studios, Iron Man wears this type of suit of armor that can react to his movements. And it, and as I said, it can repair itself uh, when pierced or broken. And, and that would be amazing to have. To, for technology to literally repair itself like holy smokes that'd be cool that'd be cool okay next slide um so how can we help continue and and kind of posing a solution here with my with my product so as technology continues to advance professor marvel technology such as these super suits become closer to reality and i i found an article uh, in 2010 the u.s government poured money into a project dubbed the talos project uh, and this was intended to create a super suit for like a super soldier um, to protect these soldiers individually. And the project was eventually thrown out, sadly, because the technology at the time was still primitive. It was still um, being experimented, and, and the soldiers using these suits, they, they recognized that they didn't have the mobility that they needed, and it didn't provide the, the adequate protection that they needed either. And so that, that idea was thrown out, or like the, the, the project was scrapped, because, I mean, it was more than an idea. They actually had um, working prototypes, uh, working to the best that they could. Um, but I, I know that as that as we privatize this commission, right, this this um, invitation from the U.S. government to make a full body armored suit, 
I believe that we will be able to save more and more of not only our soldiers' lives overseas, um, but eventually normal citizens like you and me. Um, and I, I mentioned that as we privatize this, because usually when the government it, it leads things, I, I notice that uh, it doesn't get done as well as it could when it's done by private enterprise. Right? I feel like competition um, usually helps lower prices and, and speeds up the, the time that things are completed. And so that's why I just mentioned that. Um, so slide five, the next one, uh, nanotechnology and how it can help. So how does nanotechnology weave its way into these suits? And so I just needed to define nanotechnology, even though that you know it far better than I do, um, I'd assume. Um, but it's defined as a technology that is executed on the scale of less than 100 nanometers. The goal of which is to control individual atoms and molecules, especially, especially to create computer chips and other microscopic devices. So that's di dictionary.com's definition. And, and I thought it was pretty accurate. Uh, and to, to continue the technology involved with creating these super suits and eventually the ones that can repair themselves, right? The, the technology needs to be extremely sophisticated and, and you need this nanotechnology to be done, to have it be done on, on a very small scale, right? When you're working with, with armor and those things, you need to have those plates be extremely like um, small and protected. You gotta make sure that nothing gets past it so that the, the wearer of the armor is, is still safe. And so that's why advances in nanotechnology is necessary to make this product to become a reality because I know that some of those, those um, advances aren't here yet, but uh, soon will be right. We're 10 years um, past the, the Talos project and, and technology has advanced a ton in the last 10 years. And I hope that it'll continue to advance a ton in the, in the next 10 years, in the next 10 years and, and so forth. All right, the, the next slide, slide number six. So here's the science behind some of this nanotechnology that I found. Uh, nanotechnology deals with extremely small things, as we said, things that are on a molecular and atomical basis. Um, and because we're dealing with incredibly small things, we need very high powered microscopes to be able to look at these things, um, to be able to manipulate and control the particles and the, the molecules and the, everything involved. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but that's, that's what comes to mind. Um, and so as shown in the top right picture of the slide, I thought this was fascinating. This picture is exactly what I was thinking. So here we have a, a, a strand of DNA and it's in the double helix, obviously. Um, and there's a robot who is like affixing this DNA, who's, who's like putting and taking away different um, genes from it, I guess. And I, I found this fascinating because it, when when our technology advances to that point, it would be absolutely incredible for for robots of that proportion, that size, to be able to go into a human, to be able to navigate its way around, right, uh, solo, so so artificial and intelligence type, and um, to be able to fix those types of things on on the very very small level. And so I thought I found that incredible, and we would need that type of technology for these type of nano suits. Um, for the armor to be able to heal itself, we'd need uh, very small um, things like that to, to, to fix those suits. Um, and the benefits of using nanotechnology essentially are endless um, because there's small particles and atoms and all those things and in everything, we can really uh, adjust and make anything we want to very technologically advanced. Uh, for example, uh, for armor, like, um, uh, you, you can make armor lighter, uh, yet stronger. Even though it's lighter, it can be stronger. I think of like carbon fiber. I don't, that's not an ar armor, obviously, but that's like a type of material that cars use to be lighter yet faster and it's stronger than steel. Um, and I also found that nanotechnology can help materials react to chemicals differently, which I thought was interesting. All right, next slide. So what are our current obstacles and ways to overcome them? So this product has been attempted and experimented before, right? Um, but to no avail. Creating a working full body nanotech suit of armor will be expensive and will take a lot of time. Uh, and the technology current today isn't advanced enough for where we want it to be. Uh, and so those are some current obstacles, but I, I know that there are some ways to overcome them. And so I listed just two. So as stated in previous slides, uh, I intend to have the US government fund the initial uh, research and development and startup costs uh, and maybe some outside investors as well uh, to help speed up the process. 
And I know that as time passes, the technology involved will rapidly advance. And theoretically, we could have this technology available to us in just the next few years. So the next slide, how can we market this product? Because it'd be extremely expensive to build a full body super suit. Uh, as said, I'd, I'd create a private company. I'd bid for a contract with the US government uh, so that they could fund the initial research. And after winning the, co the, the contract and developing a functioning suit of armor, I would start by equipping a few of our military personnel and making these super soldiers. Um, and after they test it out and see what works and what doesn't, uh, they could let our company know, we could fix the tweaks and, and create a product that could therefore be given to the, the civilian um, market uh, at, a, at a lower cost, right? As, as the technology advances, usually lo costs get lower. Um, and so that's what I was thinking. And I, and I thought that, that it would be cool if eventually every single one of us could have a suit like this one day so that we could be protected uh, anywhere we go. And so in conclusion, this nanotech iron suit will be able to not only save soldiers, but improve the quality of our lives and, and hopefully pr protect the American public from harm, from, from unnecessary deaths. And, and I know that due to the science involved, it, it will take time. It will take resources and, and uh, smart, smart people. Um, but I know that eventually we'll be able to see it become a reality. And, and that, was, that was my project. And I, I really liked um, the, the studying and the, the learning that was involved with it. I think it's awesome that that, that, that actually can become a reality eventually. And my last slide is, is my references, my citations um, that I used for the statistics and some of the research throughout. But thank you, Professor Marvel for a great year. And, and I, I hope to, I don't know, hopefully see you around campus if it ever opens up. Hopefully it does. Um, but thank you.